Hello, Chris Betcher here with a little quick lesson on how to do something a bit tricky in Active Inspire. And this uh, was actually um, inspired by uh, two students that are, that are at school who wanted to do a presentation for something their teacher asked them to do and they had an idea for using this technique. They didn't know if it was possible, they came and asked me and I said yeah, it's uh, not that hard to do. So here's a little video to show them how to do it and in the process I thought I'd just share it with everybody as well. So this is how to create an, uh, a transparent magnifying glass so you can look through objects in Inspire and see what's beneath them. So let me just show you how to do this. A very tricky, well I found it tricky when I first started doing this um, uh, I didn't really get my head around how this works, but once you've done it a couple of times, it kind of makes sense. Let's see if I can help you make it sense. I've got two images here. One's called Skeleton, and you can see it's just a picture of a skeleton, like so. I got that from um, Wikimedia Commons, so it's free, open source, uh, and anyone can use that without copyright problems. The other thing I want to do is to insert another image, and this one here is called Body, and you can see it's a picture of a body. Now I had a lot of trouble finding an image of just a body so I ended up drawing this one so forgive me if it's a bit dodgy but what it is is a picture of a human body that fits over the top of the skeleton. Now if you're observant you'll notice that it doesn't quite fit at the moment. The skeleton is a little too tall for this body. If I put it there you can see it pokes out the top. So I need to make this body the same size as the skeleton so they line up as an overlay one over the top of the other. Uh, and so here's how we'll do that. I'm going to just take this body and over here there is a little slider that I can slide to make it a little bit translucent so I can see through it. And when I do that I can move it on top of the skeleton and you can see I can see through there. So I'm just going to just take this body and just stretch it uh, upwards like that and probably needs to come out a little bit there and out a little bit there, maybe down a little bit there and that's probably pretty close. So that body covers the skeleton. So I'm just going to turn the translucency back. For some reason it's jumped down to the bottom here. So I'm just going to turn the slider back. And so you can see the body now covers the skeleton completely. And what I want to do is I want to create like a magnifying glass or some sort of a, a viewer that when I place it over the top of the body it sees through to the skeleton underneath. Now to do that involves using over here the layers and getting the layers right and it get, does get a little tricky so let me just show you I'm just going to widen that so we can see so I'm going to label this properly so image one in this case uh, which is which <laughs> I can't tell which is which anymore the one on the bottom is the skeleton okay so I'm going to call that skeleton so I know what's what and the one on the top is called body Okay, so now I know what's what. Active, Active Inspire works on the concept of layers. Uh, this, I find this confusing. It, work, it works on the concept of layers, but layers are grouped into three sections, or also called layers, which is why it's confusing. There is the top layer, the middle layer, the bottom layer, and also a background layer. But it's mainly these top three that we're interested in. When you create an object, a picture, a diagram, a, a a geometric shape, it automatically by default goes into the middle layer. When you create something that's an annotation, so if I just switch to the pen tool here for a second and just draw something, you can see that a pen annotation goes into the top layer by default. And these layers are quite distinct, so you can stack things within a layer, but you layers take precedence, so anything in the top layer trumps anything in the middle layer trumps anything in the bottom layer that makes sense. So if I was to take uh, that shape I just drew there and move it across you see it sits on top of both objects there. Okay. Now in order for this um, little trick to work we're going to use a tool called the magic pen. You'll find it here under the uh, extra tools and it's called magic ink. Okay. When you go to the magic ink tool, I'll just show you how I'm just going to colour something in here. Now, I'm colouring in, but you can't see anything, which is why, again, it gets a little tricky. But you can see it's created this object here called Pen2. And if I click on it, you can see there is indeed a shape there. And what I want to do is to take that shape, which I can't see, <laughs> and I want to move it out over the top of the shape here and see through. Now, nothing's happening at the moment. And the reason is 
the way magic ink works it actually sees through any objects in the top layer down to the, the middle layer and the problem at the moment is both body shapes are in the middle layer so what I need to do is take the top one which is called body and slide it upwards you can see the little line moves up there oops try it again there you go so now body which by default lives in the middle layer I've now put into the top layer and now because it's in the top layer if I can find that shape again you see when I move this shape over here it actually shows through what's happening underneath and you can see the skeleton or the object the, the, the graphic that's in here in the middle layer showing through the body which is in the top layer okay now I know that gets confusing because it sure as heck confused me but this magic pen tool if it's on top of an image in the top layer just goes straight through that and sees whatever is in the middle layer so that's the concept and if that's I mean that's fine that works perfectly well there you can see the skeletons underneath you can follow the bones and that's all good trouble is not very elegant so what I want to do is to actually create a little more elegant way of doing this so um, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to delete that so that shape's gone and I want to create another layer and I'm going to do it this way I'm going to just turn on this tool here and I'm going to draw a circle so there's a circle there don't worry about the colors of it just at the moment and with that circle I am going to click on it and change a couple of things so in the properties browser um, you can see it has a color on the border I'm just going to make it black and I'm going to make the width something a little thicker you'll see why in a moment I'm going to make it quite thick yeah 17 that'll do um, whatever looks good to you and the, f the fill here I'm actually going to make none so I have a transparent circle no fill thick black outline all right now I'm going to go back to my uh, in magic pen magic ink and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to color in the center of this in magic ink now I'm just going to switch to my object browser so you can see what's happening here if I start to paint here and I'll, I'll do it down the bottom here if I start to paint you can see it creates a layer there called pen 3 if I lift my pen and go again it creates pen 4 and if I lift my pen and go again it creates pen 5 every time I lift my pen and start coloring again it generates a new pen object and I don't want that I actually want one pen object um, it's just more elegant and far easier to deal with so let me just go and try and highlight uh, if I can find it there you go. so there's the objects that I've got down there I'm just going to delete them and you can see all the pen objects are gone so what I need to do is to color in the center of this circle without lifting my pen because I want it to be one object so um, just going to start coloring here and of course the problem is I can't see what I'm doing because I'm coloring white on white or rather transparent on white because it's kind of an odd tool this this um, magic ink tool so there's the left side of my brain not allowing the right side of my brain to do things I can't talk while I color in <laughs> anyway I'm just gonna keep going in there and what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna stay more or less inside the line I don't want to go outside that circle but I do want to make sure I overlap the inside edge and that's why I gave it a quite a, a thick border there so I'm just gonna keep going just for a second just to make sure I've got it all colored in and there you go now I have got an invisible pen layer here and I can prove it to you by going over here and just uh, actually I won't move it because if I move it I'll never find where to put it again and I've also got this shape here called uh, this shape which actually is a circle so I'm just going to call it circle Oops, uh, can't type circle okay and the pen 6 let's rename that let's call that uh, see through okay so I have a see-through object and I have a circle and what I want to do is take the circle and move it up so it's above the see-through so what I've done is I've masked off around the outside of that rough see-through shape and give it a nice clean edge now if I group those together by just selecting them both with my mouse then I should now have 
Right, you can see I have missed a couple of bits there. That's that's annoying. Let's see, just on the sides there. Just there. Never mind. But that basically works. So um, that works fine. Now just to turn it into a magnifying glass, I am going to also go down here and create a just a line. And I'm just going to draw a line like that. I don't know why it's purple. That's okay. We can go and change it. Better select it first. Don't, 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 don't want that. Undo uh, this arrow. Okay. Okay, so we've selected that shape. I'd like it to be black as well. I'd like it to be quite thick because this is going to be the handle of our magnifying glass. That'll do. Uh, I might just move it into position like so. Okay, it's all good. Alright, so this shape there is the handle of the magnifying glass. I'm just going to call it handle and I'm going to put the handle in the top layer which is where it makes more sense and so these three things the circle the see-through layer and the handle all form the magnifying glass so what I'll do now is I'll just select them all with my mouse and hit the group button up here and I'll group them together so they now become one object okay circle handle and a see-through thing we can't see but when we put the see-through thing over our figure there we go, we have a magic magnifying glass. And that's uh, that works pretty well. We can go and investigate all the different bones inside. I haven't tried this, but let's just see what happens if I... Can I resize that down to a more... Yeah, that works good. Okay. So, there you go. That's how you create a magic magnifying glass in Active Inspire by using the magic ink tool to create this uh, colored bit there and the important bit of course is getting these layers in the right order if I was to take body and put it back in the middle layer where by rights it belongs by default you can see my magic magnifying glass now does nothing it's all about getting the layer in the correct spot which has to be in the top layer so that that can see through it just like that that's how you do it